Black Ops 6 beta is finally here, and we have things like the Omni movement, brand new settings, and stuff we have to break down. I'll be giving you guys the best settings for the game quickly. So we're going to be starting off with controller, which is probably arguably the most important settings to fix. And also, if your mouse and keyboard, don't worry, a lot of this applies to you. For the button layout, we're going to be rocking tactical flip. This is something a lot of pros tend to use, and I use it myself. For sensitivity, we're going to be rocking 6-6. Six, six. This is probably 90% of pro players use the sensitivity right now in the CDL, and it's obviously one of the most consistent. It gives you better centering, better aiming, and overall, it's going to help you not miss. We're going to be having this off, off, off. Obviously, I play on flip, so I'm going to have this setting off. Controller vibration off because you don't want to have vibration in the controller. It doesn't help you in any way. Now, let's talk about dead zone input. So this is very important, especially on the left stick. So left stick minimum automatically to one. This is obviously the stick that you move with. So having a lower stick dead zone is completely fine. On the left stick max, we're going to be rocking 60. I usually like to play between 50 or 60, but 50 might be too sensitive sometimes. Your movement is going to be more responsive. Your left stick is going to be more responsive as soon as you move. And on top of it, your max, as soon as you move it a little bit, it automatically sprints to the full capability. So overall, it's just going to be more responsive. Your movement is going to be better and you're going to notice a pretty big change when you lower these two for your right stick minimum i like to put somewhere between three to five five the highest usually and even like two to three if you can go a little lower it just feels like you have more control of your stick it's going to help you aim better at default it automatically sets it up to 15 do not play on 15 don't even play on 10 it's hurting your aim you're going to want to go down between highest like five or six if you have really bad stick drift but even then you can control stick drift don't think too much about it right stick max do not touch this leave it at 99 this will hurt your aim sometimes more than helping it if you lower it a uh, left trigger and right trigger zero as soon as you push them down those triggers obviously responds very quickly uh for the aiming you do have a sensitivity multiplier section so if you're wondering like how do i lower my sensitivity multiplier well it's going to be right here it's it's kind of different compared to other games so you can lower it down right here if you like to and then obviously you got aiming advanced settings and this is something I want to talk about is your aim response curve type. No brainer. Dynamic. Got to put it on dynamic. And something I really want to show here and, and I help you guys understand, there used to be two aim assist settings. In this game, it's just one. It's just your aim response curve type. Your regular uh, ADS, your regular aim assist settings are by default. So that's something you can change right there. Awesome. There's custom sensitivity per zoom as well. If you wanted to change that target aim assist, of course, on because you're on controller. Whoa, you're going to want to have that bad boy on motion sensor behavior. Make sure just have that off movement. This goes into Omni movement. Now you're probably wondering, how do I turn on automatic tactical sprint? It's going to be right here. You're going to want to turn on tactical sprint assist. It's going to give you that automatic tactical sprint type of beat and sprint assist delay on zero. So automatically responds. Make sure this is on on so basically when you're moving sideways backwards it automatically activates the automatic tactical sprint so you're not walking backwards you're not walking sideways you get that full boost of movement so you can automatic tactical sprint sideways and slide you know what i'm saying so that's how you hit them with that movement that ish ish mantle assist i like to have this off because at the end of the day man you do not want to be mantling on a lot of random things especially when you're jumping around when you're fighting in gunfights usually you do not want the mantle assist so that's off crouch assist off automatic airborne off Again, you don't want to be automatically mantling, and especially when you're mid-air, it's going to hurt you most of the time. That's going to help you. Slide dive behavior. You almost got to have this on hybrid. If not, I recommend slide only. But in general, hybrid gives you that super good response when it comes to sliding and diving, which you can use very well in Black Ops 6. Diving is actually pretty damn good in this game compared to MW3 where it wasn't. So you kind of got to get used to hybrid. It's quite difficult to get used to. I myself just got used to it today, but hybrid is key, especially to use the movement to its full capabilities. So auto peak, door peak, off. And let's go down to the movement advanced settings just in case you have some questions. Got this on toggle, off, on, on. Sprint to restore, uh, slide, maintain, sprint. You definitely want to have these two on. Single tap, sprint, plunging underwater, free. So you have better movement when you're underwater. And sprinting, door bash, off. JK, on. In multiplayer, there's no vehicle. So we're going to skip that one. Then we're going to go to combat. We're going to have it on hold. ADS to melee, grouped, equipment behavior, hold, press. Uh, this is toggle, obviously, to open up your scoreboard. Combat event settings. Uh, all this is pretty much default. I didn't really need to touch any of these. These settings are more for, like, Warzone. Uh, but for multiplayer, it doesn't really matter. Now, let's go into the juicier stuff. Let's go for the graphics. Display mode, full screen exclusive. This is obviously pretty much a must. Make sure it's on the right monitor. Make sure you're on the right refresh rate, because sometimes it's not. Make sure you're on display resolution. Do Having these two on the right one is obviously important for your performance. Uh, these, I left this at by default. Um, what I will say, my brightness, my default, I always up it. It starts at 50. I always go like 53, 54, 55, just because it makes the game a little bit brighter. And I feel like you need that, especially in Call of Duty. And video, you can have this on on or on boost. Definitely recommended. Uh, make sure this is off, off, and unlimited. The custom frame rate, you can kind of mess with this, but make sure these two are off. It's going to help with your frames. I got this on optimal. 
uh, focus mode 90 and HDR off. Now let's go to the quality. We're going to go to custom here. Obviously, if you don't have custom, you can just click basic first. And that's basically very similar to what we're going to be using. Uh, obviously, make sure this is on 100 and make sure it's on the right render resolution. If not, your quality is going to be terrible. Uh, dynamic resolution off. Fidelity cast. This is a beautiful setting. Make sure this is on. Uh, for some reason, it's kind of bugging right now. But if you kind of click it twice, you see it'll pop up what's supposed to pop up, which is fidelity cast strength. And I like to have this on 95, 90 to 95. 100 just looks a little too sharp, even though it does look good. But that's what I would recommend. Uh, VRAM scale target 80 on off. I'm gonna go through these a little bit quicker. Um, that way you guys have a better understanding. Uh, so it looks like my settings reset a little bit here. Um, so we're gonna have this on high or normal just because, you know, normal is a little bit better for your frames. Uh, normal, off, low, low, on, on, high, optimized, low, very low, off, low, off, high, off, low, off, low, off. So obviously what we're trying to aim for here is really good performance while still having a decent quality. So it's almost maximized the performance, but obviously like I'm sure like just like you guys and myself, like we want to have a little bit better quality. So it kind of gives you that healthy balance, but more focused on performance. So make sure to copy those settings and then apply. Next, we're going to be talking about view motion reduction off, of course. Field of view 105. Uh, I don't know if you guys heard this before. Usually 107 or lower FOV, you get more aim assist. It feels better. You're going to see a lot of pro players in the CDL or in general play on 105, 103, or 100. Even some play on 95. So I like to play on 105 to 107 just because I'm a content creator at the end of the day. And I like to have a little bit more FOV. It just feels pleasing to me. And I'm sure it does for a lot of you guys. I don't like being too zoomed in. Um, So I would really recommend between 107 to 100. I think that's completely fine. If you feel like, you know, I want to go a little higher. Highest probably 107. You know, if you want to go a little bit lower, go to like 100. But around this FOV is pretty damn good for multiplayer. ADS field of view affected. Again, this is going to give you less visual recoil, right? It's going to make your gun feel like it has less recoil, almost no recoil. So it's going to be really good for you. A default, default. Obviously, weapon of view, you can mess with this a little bit. People say having a weapon bigger sometimes is better for the center of your screen. You can just leave it on default. Or if you want to make the gun look smaller, you can put it on wide. On top of it, we got the default for the field of view uh, for the vehicle. Who cares about that? And you're going to want to turn this off turn this off and put this at least 50 percent this is going to help again these three settings are going to help with the visual recoil now let's go to audio very quickly we're going to put show more and i obviously have my master game volume at 100 now we're going to go to 20 gameplay music volume 50 dialogue volume effects volume at 100 cinematic music volume at 30 now the most important one at the end of the day is effects volume which is at 100 the only reason i have gameplay music right now is because i like how it sounds and the main menu is a pretty dope pretty dope music and it gives me some hype and obviously usually i just have this off and cinematic music I usually have it off but for the beta we're leaving it on a little bit but make sure you have these obviously i have home theater but this is completely different and depends on what you're using what feels the best for you obviously you can put like speakers headphones i think the two other good ones are headphones or headphones based boost uh if you're not using home theater those are too good if you feel like you need more sound and all of this and then obviously turn this on to a uh, reduced tinnitus sound this is also going to help us hear stuff better when you know there's a lot of stuff going on almost said that's word oh hello man oh, I'm glad. and now we got to break down some stuff in our interface that i really want to talk about that's actually quite important so don't leave just yet so obviously if you want this to show your fps counter you go over here show your fps counter and serve server latency the top left uh whatever it may be you know whatever you're looking for it can be gpu stuff it depends on your console or pc the fps counter for me is really beneficial and it kind of lets me know how my game is performing my pc is performing on certain maps so for here that's the main thing you want to know um uh, but let's go to this you kind of don't need this so you can have this off but we're gonna go down here to color customization now this is a place where you can obviously customize your colors and you can change like your squad your enemy color all that stuff but what i really want to talk about is just like on mw3 mw2 and so on you can obviously change your color filter settings and this has kind of been the go-to since day one is you want to go to filter two which is going to make your colors obviously you can tell the difference between no filter and when you go to filter two you can see the colors become a little bit like it's more just more in depth the color it's more full right it's more darker it's it's more colorful so you go to filter two and you want to click both and put this both at 100 it's basically going to give you more saturation and more color in game which is going to be more aesthetically pleasing for you then you want to go to the gameplay hud now this is something completely new that they did in obviously black ops 6 if you go to the hud presets they have automatically some presets in their huds right so you can actually see right here they have standard inverted which goes to the right instead of the left they have classic whatever it may be so there's a few you can choose from. Maybe you like one more than more than I do. So I completely understand that, you know, if you really don't like some of these. But I really do like Magnified. It basically makes your HUD like zoomed in. It makes it bigger on a screen. 
which I'll let you know, or if you don't know, your mini map is extremely important. And if you can get have a bigger mini map and see it easier, it's only better for you, even in a competitive standpoint. So I really like Magnified. It's what I'm going to be rocking for now. And then, of course, something that you also got to know is your HUD bounce. So your HUD bounce is basically obviously your HUD, you know, your ammo, your gun, your mini map, all that stuff. And it basically you're going to want to push it in as much as you can. You're going to want to shrink it into the middle of your screen. That way, all that information, especially your mini map, is closer to you and you can get the information quicker. You can see it easier and it's going to help you do better in game. So you want to do those two things. And something I've always recommend is square mini map over round. Square just gives you a little bit extra mini map. So you have more on your screen versus if it was a circle or round, you get a little bit less of your mini map. Obviously, scroll down here. This is on. Uh, radar off and i kind of left these all pretty much the same nothing too crazy all right guys we're gonna be posting black ops 6 content all weekend tips informational stuff and some sick gameplay make sure to like comment and subscribe it helps the video out a lot i hope you have a wonderful day and i'll catch you guys in the next one peace